What's the word, y'all? The end season tournament was nearly perfect. If I was graded it 1 through 10, it was like a 9.7. And that point seven was just because when we got to the neutral site, sometimes it didn't feel like the crowd was into it. The, both of the Lakers games, it felt like Lakers fans showed out. But like that one game with the when we saw the Bucks versus the Pacers maybe wasn't as exciting as far as the crowd. What Whatever. Adam Silver got everything he could have wanted. This was like a movie for him. You got to think about, of course... He, he, he's looking at this from the aspect of I want good basketball, but like at the end of the day, he wants to market it. He wants to sell it in a year once the TV rights is over. So to have a final where we have an up and coming small market team led by a guy that's on the brink of superstardom, go against a legendary organization, a big market organization that also holds one of the greatest players of all time. Like it, Adam Silver couldn't had it even better. And then the Lakers going on to win it. It's just, again, Adam Silver was probably really, really happy. Now, I'm recording this as things are going on. They're about to announce who wins the MVP. Um, I'm not sure who it's going to go to because the entire tournament, it's no no doubt Braun. But that finals game, that finals game, Anthony Davis was was the one, one of the best Anthony Davis performances ever. And of course, that is saying a lot because Anthony Davis has a ton of amazing performances. The only unfortunate part is because it's an instant tournament final, it gets lost in the ether. Just like a, a play-in game, like it's hard to find those stats. So he had what a 40, 20, and 5 game. Ridiculous stat line. He was everywhere. As great as he was offensively because he ended with 40 points, the defense is where he had his best thing. I'm going to pause for a second because they're about to announce the MVP. It's so funny to see like the younger players react to it. You see <laughs> Jackson Hayes is turning up. LeBron I'm like, yeah, we like this and all, but this ain't really the end goal. Outstanding play throughout the entire tournament. Oh, it's the entire tournament. To a man that's who, LeBron's frankly, award. there's nothing else that's LeBron's to win. Award. He said the entire tournament. There ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. Give it to him right now. I'm sorry, but it doesn't come with a franchise. I'm sorry, LeBron but it doesn't James, come with the a franchise. That's crazy. Ah! Shout out, bro. Shout out, bro. All right, it's official. It's official. You want to know the super crazy part about this? In a couple years, in a million years, whenever LeBron retires... This in-season tournament MVP award will be named after him. It will be. Every other historic player, super historic player, has an award named after them for the most part. And now that we're adding new awards, you're not going to rename the DPOI. You're not going to rename the MVP. But one trophy without a name in the first one that's won by is LeBron. That's going to be the in-season Le tournament LeBron Jays trophy. This man is almost 40 years old, and he treated this run as if it was an NBA championship. He's going to get that named after him. Anyway, I kind of want to get back to Anthony Davis because, again, he was the most dominant player in this entire game. And I, I've, I've said this before, before the season started, throughout the, the course of this year, that the Lakers are for sure contenders to me. I know when they're slower star, people are like, oh, should we be worried about this team? Should we not? I feel as though with LeBron James still playing at the level that he is because again he's having one of his better recent years which is crazy to say because again he's almost 40 and when Anthony Davis playing the way he does this team has a ceiling of an NBA championship now players 3 through 10 or 3 to 15 we have to figure out completely but Austin Reeves and switching over to the bench role has looked amazing in this one people calling it his flu game because he ended up with what 30-ish points 28-ish points when before the game it said that he was gonna give it a go because he had been bedridden the whole time but when you have those two dudes playing at the level that you've seen through the course of this NCAA tournament that you've seen in this very last game, they're going to be a hard team to take out. And I can't help but to think about last year. When you think about the playoffs of last year, LeBron was cool, but we know that LeBron wasn't 100%. And they got all the way to the conference finals without LeBron being the super dominant force that he usually is in the playoffs. Do you know how ridiculously dominant you have to be on the inside for you to win a basketball game where you shot 2 of 13 from 3? Two of 13 from three. I think they made their first three-pointer like the third or fourth quarter. Now, obviously, it's not a perfect team. That's one of the complaints, right? They're, they're a low-volume, low-percentage three-point shooting team. But the other stuff, the defensive uh, capabilities from pretty much one through five on many different lineups and to have players like Braun or AD that can completely take over. Like there's a there's parts in that Pelicans game where Braun hit those three back to back to back threes. That is taking over a game. Anthony Davis's defense by itself is like no matter what, I'm going to end up with having us a top seven to five defense. And to have the people around him also be locked in. This is a team that funnels in the offense like, hey, you got to go meet Anthony at the rim. And Anthony's one of the best in the world when it comes to protecting that basket. I've said this years and years ago, that if Anthony Davis ended up ending his career with zero DPOYs, that would be a travesty. 
because he's one of the top three defensive players in the in the world. And you saw that on national TV today. He was everywhere. You've seen it on national TV all season. You've seen it. Now, obviously, his health is always a big thing. This year, he's been really healthy, even though he got banged up in this. You're like, oh, no, it's not happening, is it? He's been healthy. And right now, it is like, it's like Rudy Gobert is a DPOY favorite. Anthony Davis is there. You feel me? Anthony Davis is there with a lot of basketball left. We all always talk about when he's going to take the torch. When he's going to take the torch from LeBron, when he becomes the best player. And, be and because LeBron is so good still, that's not even a, a question that I even think about no more. You know what I'm saying? Because Bron is so good, I mean, both of these players are top tennis players in the league, you know, any given day. A, ga a game like tonight, Andy Davis is, is like the fifth best player. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not even thinking about, oh, when he's going to pass the torch because LeBron is not in a position to pass the torch. He's that dominant still. Now, the Pacers are a team that <laughs> they don't defend. <laughs> They don't defend at all. Like, they are a high offensive team. And they gave Tyrese Halliburton so many different looks, so many different lengthy defenders, a second to third defender coming at all times, that this guy that in Tyrese Halliburton, who has been dominant this entire way, this entire season, had a game. We ended up with 20 points, 50% shooting. That's that's not who we, we normally have seen. He ended up with 11 assists, three turnovers for Tyrese Halliburton. That's, that's like the worst game of all time. <laughs> that's how much he's been protecting the ball. They forced him to turn the ball over three different times. That is a lot for him. And then when you think about their paint protection, I mean, I think going into this game, they were in the bottom five when it comes to percentage of like points given up at the rim. Like this is a team that runs you off your three point line. You saw that for the Lakers. They only attempted 13 and they only hit two. They run you off the three point line. But the sacrifices you make at that is that you get a lot of baskets at the rim. And though Miles Turner is a good rim protector, he can't do it all. And you saw him get, get bullied a bunch today where he even fouled out of this one. They had no answer for the, the complete dominance of LeBron going to the basket, AD going to the basket, and Austin Reeves. Like, they continue to continue to add pressure and pressure and pressure. And even all that said, the Pacers were in this until the last couple minutes. You know, they were in it in the last couple minutes. But... The dominance of Anthony Davis prevailed. I'm happy that everybody, well, for the most part, took the in-season tournament very seriously. And I would expect next, next year to be even more um, intense from every team, really. Because I believe that that first week of the in-season tournament, I definitely remember some teams, not that they weren't taking it serious, but they didn't think about the point differential. They didn't think about it like that. And then towards the end of it, they like, oh my God, well, gee, we're up by 30 points. We need to foul Andre Drummond. You know, so I think that next season, because we understand how the point differential work or how this and that work, we're going to see all 30 teams completely lock in for the common goal. Because a team like the Indiana Pacers, who a lot of people believe is like a playoff team, got all the way to the NBA Finals. You didn't have to be a, a contender, a, a, a NBA championship contender to make a deep run. And you think about the money attached to these players. I mean, for the most part, everybody that walked out of here got paid. What was it? A hundred thousand dollars for making it to the finals. Of course, 250, oh, I'm sorry, $250,000 to make it to the finals, a hundred thousand dollars to make it to Vegas. And then a half a million to the actual winners across the board. So like the money is there. And, and based on what we just saw with the Lakers and Braun and some of the most respected players in ball taking it real serious, we will continue to see that. I wonder if Adam Silver and them are going to make any adjustments to it because I personally did not love the, the courts. <laughs> just, I, I can't be the only one. And I actually saw that Adam Silver said today that when it comes to the NBA Finals, they're going to put the Larry O'Brien in the middle again, just like when I was a kid, which is dope. But he also said there's going to be a pop of color. And I'm like, Adam, we don't need it. I don't, I don't know a single person that's looking at that court. It's like, I actually want to watch basketball now because the courts is green and red and blue and all. No, 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 no. You can keep the courts the same, but you can continue to put the Larry O'Brien in the middle. That's all we want. That's all we want. 109 points is what the Pacers scored. The first two games of the season, they didn't score a bunch of points. Um, I'm sorry. That was not the first game of the season, but somewhere in the beginning of the season, they had a couple of 104s. But since then... I mean, they've been the best offense of nearly all time. And the Lakers holding them to 109 is the least amount of points they've scored since the beginning of November. They went a whole month of, <laughs> of putting up 120s, 130s. Where's that one game? 157, 130. Oh, that's the Pistons. 144. Like, and that was without Tyrese Halliburton. They put up 144 points. Like, them holding them to 109 is just like a really great defensive game. Um, let me know what you think about the Lakers, the in-season tournament, whatever it may be. As always, I'll be in the comment section.